Okay. Good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Um, as you can see, tonight's session will be an introduction to cryptography. So I'm going to let John um, take over, introduce himself, and then start the session. By the way, um, the microphones are muted. So um, if you have any questions and comments along the way, just feel free to write it in the chat box. And then towards the end, we might unmute if you raise your hand, or you can always ask your questions in the chat box. We'll just get to them. Okay, you can start. John. So good evening, everyone. Hope I'm audible. Um, yes, but you sound a bit muffled. Yep. You're audible, but you sound a bit muffled. And what about now? Um, it's better. Try again. Uh, now? Okay, okay, it's better. Okay, you can start. So today I'm going to take you through introduction to cryptography. So cryptography, it's a very wide field. You can't finish everything in a day. So I'll just go through the basics of what cryptography entails. Then at the very end, we'll have a small practical and feel free to ask any questions along the way. So when you talk of cryptography, there are the terms that one is supposed to get familiar with. So the first term is this term, cryptography. So this can be defined as the development and the use of codes. So the codes in this term refer to the hashes that are used in encryption and decryption. The other term is cryptanalysis, which is the breaking of codes. So for cryptology, it entails both cryptography and cryptanalysis. So the definition of cryptology can be said as the development, use of codes, and breaking of the codes or the hashes. And finally, the last term is encryption. So for encryption, like the, my simplest definition of encryption, I can say it's a way to scramble data to allow the, only the authorized parties or the personnel to get to understand it. So in encryption, like when you are sending the data, data in transit or either data that is stored, the best way to store it is as an encrypted format. So when you encrypt it, you deny the access by any unauthorized personnel. So there are the types of encryption, which I believe most of you know about them. So the first one is the symmetric encryption and the second is asymmetric encryption. So for symmetric encryption, and these are their differences in this small table. So for symmetric, it involves the use of a preshared public key to encrypt data. Uh, for asymmetric, both parties or both communicating person, people, each has to have a pair of a public and a private key. So when transmitting data or when communicating, so user A will have to encrypt the data using the public key of the other person. So I will just show you this in a short moment, what I mean by saying so. Uh, for symmetric encryption, it's normally a short, they are, it uses the short key lengths of about 40 to 256. But for symmetric, it involves very, very long key lengths. So for symmetric, since there's only one public key, so encryption and decryption is relatively faster as compared to that of asymmetric encryption. So the examples and the uses for symmetric, it's mostly used in VPN traffic. And for asymmetric, it's used in HTTPS, that is web browsing and stuff. So examples of each that are here for symmetric, we have DES, that is data encryption standards, three DES. AES is advanced encryption standard, we have SEAL and reverse cipher. So for asymmetric, we have Defi Hellman RSA, which we'll use in a practical, this reverse Shamil Adelman. 
it's what we use to demonstrate how data is encrypted and encrypted while tra being transferred. So, uh, one might tend to ask, what is the essence of having cryptography in our network? So some of them, these are the core goals of, of the, the main objectives of cryptography. So the first is to ensure confidentiality. So confidentiality ensures that data or information does not get into the wrong hands. So for this, like, it means that well, data is being transferred, one cannot like have to intercept the data and read or manipulate. The same case applies to integrity, it ensures that data remain unchanged. This applies to stored data in storage. Uh, for authentication, this guarantees that the message is not a forgery. So for authentication, it's achieved through the use of signatures and signing. So once a person receives data, one like, gets to verify the signature or the hash that, that case if it's from the, like, the original out of the same data. So for integrity, this is achieved through hashes. The like SHA-256, SHA-1, those hashes are the ones which are used to ensure that there is data integrity. So the last but not the least, there are so many so there is data and there is non reputation, which means that the sender cannot deny having sent a particular piece of information. So like one leaves the traces of the, the prints when you send data. Uh, there are methods of breaking or the cracking of codes, which I see here, the cracking of codes is cryptanalysis. And the guys involved in this job, they are called cryptonalysts. Cri cryptonalysts, yeah. So the methods, some, these are some of the methods. There is brute forcing, which includes every possible combination. So once like, uh, a person encounters um, uh, or comes across a hash or an encrypted information, let's say it's a zip file that is achieved that is archived through a password. So one might use brute force method to get to try and crack the password and get to see the content that is encrypted or that is zipped in the particular file. So for super text method, the attacker has several encrypted messages but has no knowledge of the plain text. So like the attacker tries to come up with like a combination from the several encrypted data that he or she has to try and get to know the plain text that was encrypted. So in this case, we can talk of B64. B64 encrypts data or it encodes data in some, some way like a uh, reader book, but they are very like scrambled words. So like the letters, they don't have a certain setting. They don't make meaning or the wording, like they're just letters and numbers, but you can't like literally read them. So like they try from that combination to come up with the cipher text or the, no, sorry, the plain text that was encrypted. So known plain texts, the attacker has a clue of the plain texts by gaining access to various cipher texts. So cipher text method and known plain texts it's like they complement each other. So for non text, the attacker has like, gained access to some previous, uh, some various cipher texts, then tries to like combine his knowledge to come to come up with the key that was used either to encrypt or decrypt that data, and like from there, he might either decide to change it or do whatever. He or she wants to do that. So the others are choosing plain text method, choosing cipher text method. All these methods it's like they complement each other. So uh, last but not least, before we get into the practical part, 
uh, the applications of cryptography and encryption. So one of it is data or digital signatures, which verify applications and content from the internet. So in this case, you can take an example, like when you download an app from the Play Store or the App Store that one uses, before you like the app is allowed to like get into the phone, there has to be a verification of the like the signature between. So the what the phone does, it like gets the hash that was used to encrypt. It has like a signature that it verifies. We call it fingerprinting. So like the app, once a developer has the app ready for use, they place it in Play Store, they, like they put it in Play Store. And then once they sign it, like in case you alter with the app and then you have to sign it back. So once a person tries to download, the hashes don't match. So like the, the key in this case, we can use like GB WhatsApp. When you try to download the app, like there's a pop-up notification that comes, this app might be harmful to your device, then we just go ahead and ignore that. So like that app means that the hash was altered with and altering with a single, like single letter on, a single part of the hash makes the hash like totally different from the initial signature that was used by the developer. So the other part is password management. So when passwords are stored, it's advised that one encrypts them and like, so you have like a set of passwords. So you encrypt each password as a single, as a single unit. And then the place or the location that you're going to store, you still have to encrypt it, or you can still store it as a zip archive. But in this case, one has to use like a strong password, which cannot be like easy, easily cracked. Uh, the third application is secure network communication. So this comes, uh, this is where HTTP protocol comes in place. So for HTTPS, it involves TLS, that is transport layer security and secure socket layer. So we'll, uh, I will just do a small demo on how the HTTPS, the S, the S part, the secure part, place in the transfer of data as one browses through the web. So the last, but the, this is not the last application. There are so many applications of cryptography and encryption. There is electronic, there is electronic money. So in this case, you can talk of Bitcoins or the transactions that happened like online. So when you transact online, uh, the, like the transactions are normally encrypted in a way that in case of any like misconfiguration or any like by accident, one gets hold of the data in transit. It's, it will be very difficult for one to know that it's a transaction unless you have the, the top skills that like you have to outdo or the, or to outsmart the algorithms that are used in electronic money. So on this part on HTTPS, uh, I'm going to use uh, this, this template here, and then I will show you how HTTPS occurs. So we'll have a client and a server. So in this case, the client will be a browser, like Chrome browser. So here we have the client in orange and the server in green. So I believe my screen is visible from your side. Yes, it is. So once you have the client and the server, in this case, we, we talk of the browser. 
So you, you log into your Chrome browser and then let's say you search like www.cisco.com. So this is, this is like the process that happens, just a small like demonstration of what happens behind the scenes. So the first, the first uh, action that takes place when you just log in with the browser and type in the URL of the specific name of the site that you want to visit, the first activity is the T TCP3 way handshake. And this is what happens in the TCP three way handshake. So you type the www.cisco.com or the Huawei.com. So the first message to be sent to the server is a TCP SYN. So a TCP SYN, SYN means that the port will remain open, like SYN comes from the synchronous message. So TCP scene tells the server to remain, to leave the port open, the port that the, the particular message has gone in through or has accessed the server using. So that port will remain open due to the scene message that is sent by the client browser. So the next message to be sent is from the server, which will be a TCP scene and an acknowledgement. In the from the server, we'll have both TCP scene and pack. Way two messages. So the first one will tell the scene, the scene part will tell the client the port to remain like open. The port will not be closed. And the ACK part, the acknowledgement part. Uh, is to show that the message, the first TCP scene that was sent by the client browser was received successfully. Then from there, the client sends back an acknowledgement message, a TCP ACK. So this TCP acknowledgement So we'll have a TCP. Yeah, we will have a TCP. The acknowledgement is to notify the server that the scene that was sent by the server was received. So from there, this is the first part that happens once you type in the specific site of the URL to visit. So this part will consider the TCP three-way handshake. So from there, from the TCP three-way handshake, the two devices, the client and the server, they have not yet established a secure connection to send and receive data. So the next part will be establishment of a secure connection between the two. So this is what happens when the client tries to establish a secure connection to the server. So the client will initiate the process by sending a client hello message. We can use a different color for the same. So here we'll have a Client hello message is the one which will initiate the process of 
acquiring a secure connection between the client and the server, that is the browser. So there are some of the contents that contain that are contained in the client hello message. Just list them here. So yeah, just here. So client hello message has the TLS. So in the client hello message, there is a TLS version. TLS version, that is like TLS 1.2, 1.3. That is what one of the content that is contained in the client hello message. So that will notify the server, the version in which the browser is comfortable in running in, that is in sending and receiving of data. So the second, this is the CIFA spec. The spec like means the encryption and decryption algorithm that will be used. So like it tells the server, so this is the encryption the algorithm that I'm comfortable with and that like will enable you, me and you to send and receive data. So in the C first step, So it contains the encryption and decryption algorithm. These are for the browser, that is the client. After that, the server, when the server receives the, receives the client hello message, it has to communicate back. So there are three messages that are sent by the server. So the first message is a server hello message. Since the client sent a hello, the, the, like the server has to reply back. So here we'll have the server hello message. So in this message, like this is where the client will know that the server received, received a first client hello message which contains the client, the TLS version in the CIFA specs, this just to mention a few. So from this, like the server has most, like all the versions that it supports, the server is made in such a way that it supports all the versions and all the CIFA specs that are there in use. So it's upon the server to adjust in accordance with the client browser or the client requests. So after the server hello message is sent, the, the, that message that, the second message that is sent by the server contains the certificate. So the certificate is to assure that This assures that the server is trusted. Like it assures the client that yes, I'm like I'm, I'm authorized to to provide such services. So what happens in this uh, message? It, the certificate contains the, all the protocols that are allowed and all the sites that are verified. So you can see the both the client and the server they have like. Uh, certificate, certificates. So once the client, the server sends uh, the certificate to the client, 
the client is able to like trust the server for the next process that is going to take place. So in the certificate, we have the version, the, the certificate version and the key. Yeah, yeah the certificate version here. Yeah. So the server, the client send, sends the hello message, server replies back with three consecutive messages. But these are taken like one, one message, which contains the server hello, the certificate and the certificate version. That is all this includes even the signature and the hashes that the certificate has been signed using. So the next part is now upon for, it's from the client to, give back the reply to the server. So what it does is the, so the client sends back a message, but in this time, uh, but this time the client will be sending uh, like keys or a public uh, key. So in this case, we are talking about asymmetric encryption. So in asymmetric encryption, we have the public. So the server, the client has the public. Sorry. Public and private. Private key. And the same case to the server. public and the private key. So in asymmetric encryption, the client will be sending data and encrypting it using the server's public uh, key. And then when the message reaches the server, it will be decrypted using the private key. The same case happens in the, uh, the way back. So the server will encrypt the message with the client's public key. Once the message arrives, it will be decrypted using the private key. In this case, the private key is not allowed to be shared by it. it only belongs to the specific person or the specific device in the network. So in this case, the client will send a message with the key exchange. So the key exchange in this case will be the public key of the client. So after that, like, oh, sorry, uh, here in the certificate version, here, so you have the certificate version and the servers, Public key. Yeah, so these three messages, the server hello certificate, the certificate version, and the server's public key are sent. So when the client will be sending back the key exchange, like the private key, this key here, it will be sending back like his public, the public key. Yeah, the public key of the client to the server. So at the end of this process here, both the client and the server will have exchanged their public keys. So the next part will be like to establish, to establish a, a, a session. So a session is normally identified using the session keys of, uh, of, that will be generated.
So here will be establishment of a secure session. So what will take, what will happen here is that the client will generate an RSA key, an RSA session key. So once the client generates the RSA session key, since the session key like it's private between the two, the two devices, the two communicating devices. So it will tunnel the session key in the server's public key. So So the um, client tunnels, yeah. Um, there's a question. Um, yeah. someone asked, can you explain what the SYN means? SYN is a sync synchronous message. A synchronous message is a message that is sent to either of the devices to tell it that the port should remain like open. The connection should be like the the connection should remain continuous. They should meet. There should be no point at which the connection like breaks. So a synchronous message is like terminated with a finish. So a TCP fin F I N is used to break the synchronous message. Like it's used to break the connection between devices. So a sync is used to establish like a continuous connection between devices. Is okay. it okay? I, I believe so. And then um, someone else asked, in which TCP slash IP layers do those processes happen? So this happens in the application layer. This is where, since this is where we have the HTTP and HTTPS, DNS, yeah, this happens in the application layer, the network, TCP IP layer, the fourth layer, I believe so. Is it okay? Yes, both said thanks. Yeah, yeah. So once the client is start, uh, here the client will generate an RSA key session. Yeah, a key, yeah, an RSA key, which will tunnel through the server's public key. So once the key reaches the server part, like the server side, it will decrypt it. And now the, like a secure connection will be established using that session key. So from this, this is uh, like, So the secure connection is now established. Once the session key has, once the, the session key reaches the server. So in this case, both the client and the server will have the same session key. And now data transfer can begin. Like you can start now like receiving data, sending data, get post and get requests. So all this happens in a like in a span of a moment in such a way that you can't realize all the click. You just enter into a browser, search www.cisco.com, and then immediately you have the login page on the, the dashboard. Like before that dashboard is displayed to you, these are some of the processes that get to happen uh, in between so that like, the session on the transfer of data between you and the server 
is secure. So I believe I can just go to a small demo using Kali. So is my session, is my screen visible from your end? Um, yes, it is. So here we'll just have two users. We'll just take the next almost five minutes. So I'll create two users. There's user A on this end and then user B on this other end. So user A, that is Alice and Bob. So we'll, we'll first generate each uh, private and public key for both users. So we'll use OpenSSL in this uh, practical. So we'll generate So user A is Alice, so OpenSSL generate RSA. So the output, the key will be, the, the key will be stored in a file called Alice private dot key. And the key size, you can specify the key size or just leave it that way. So you can see the key is generated for Alice, the private key. For Bob, we'll do the same. So out, so the output or the key will be stored in Bob private key. In this case, I decided to use the same size. So you can see both users have their private key. So in this private key, you can just decide to take a look at it. So this is all, like this is the key that the private key for Alice, and the same case will appear for Bob. So from this private key, there is the, the public key. So once you generate an RSA key, it has the private key, but in it is a public key. So we are going to like get the public key out of this. So we'll use OpenSSL RSA. So we want to get the public key in Alice private key. So dash in, then we specify in Alice. So in Alice private key, and you want to get the public key out, pub out, it. this dash pub out means the public key out, and it will be stored in Alice public key. So we have two, the, the two keys for Alice, the same will happen for both. So both users and this, you can compare and see the keys for the private key and the public key, they are of different sizes. So this is the size of the private key. So the beginning and the end. So you can just see the public key now. So the public key is a bit like small. So from here, we'll just generate a message using nano. Let's assume that both of them are chatting either WhatsApp. So Alice decides to write a message to Bob. This is the message.
So you can see the message that Alice has generated. So this is the message, it, it is in Ali's phone. So we want to send the message to Bob. And for us to send the message, we have to encrypt it using Bob's key, Bob's, Bob's public key. So what you are going to use, we are going to like copy Alice's key to Bob and Bob's public key to Alice so that it can make like the encryption to be uh, simple. So this CP Alice or uh, Alice is public. So I'm going, I'm copying this public key so that Bob can have it. Oh, so sorry, it's not for it's B, yeah, to B. So when you come to this side, to Bob's site, you can see Bob has Alice's public key, his private key, and his public key. So we'll do the same so that Alice can get access to Bob's public key. So when you come to Alice, Alice has her private key, her public key, and Bob's public key. So we want to encrypt the message. So we'll use OpenSSL. So OpenSSL, so, so this is public key utilized utility, public key utility. We want to encrypt in this case, sorry. So encrypt will use in Bob's public public key public key and then the message you want to encrypt it's in the file the file is named message this one in message so the outcome of the encrypted message you want to, to be stored file called message to encrypt. So, So here in, the, in this case, we we'll use the public, public in pub, yeah, in pub out, yeah, in pub in, not use public in, then the message in, yeah. So yeah, and we have the message, the encrypted message, this is, so if we can take a look at it. So this is the encrypted message in which Alice will send to Bob. So sending, like take a look at this example. When you send a message to a person, you are, you are you, you remain with the copy of the message. Then the same, the other person now has the similar message. So like, I'm just going to copy this 
encrypted message to website. It's like they are chatting. So Bob has the key, the message already. So this is the message, message dot encrypt. And Bob can't read the message. So like it's still in encrypted form. So what Bob will do, Bob will use his private key to decrypt this message. And then the output will be like received. So I'm going to use open SSL. So the public key utility in, the, in this time, in this case, you are decrypting. So we'll use Bob's private key. We want to decrypt this file message.enc. Then the output will be stored in a file called received. So we can see Alice public key, Bob's private key, Bob's public and message.decrypt. Then the decrypted message. So let's see whether Bob can be able to read the message. Yeah, it's the same same message that is on this other side. Yeah, so both of them have the message. So uh, a scenario that either a man in the middle attack happens and these two are communicating. So unless the guy who is intercepting the traffic has either of the private key, maybe the, the hacker intercepted the traffic as it was going to Bob. So unless the person has Bob's private key, he or she will not be able to decrypt the message or read the message that was sent by Alice to Bob. So the same case happens to either certificate either the digital certificates and certificate signing. So I don't think there is much to do since time is not on our side. So I will just welcome any question and any comment or clarification. Yeah, I think I'm done with the presentation. So the floor is yours for any questions and clarifications where you did not get it right. Um, if you have any questions, you can unmute yourself now or you can write your question in the chat if you're not comfortable. Samuel said, thank you very much, learned a lot. Yeah, most welcome. Uh, Dell asked, can I run the commands on git bash? Uh, I'm not quite sure about that, but if you try and they work out well and good. I've, no, I've never tried doing the same on git bash, but since it uses like the same environment as Linux, maybe they can work or maybe they can't. So just try and if they work out well and good. Um, Lat asked, when is the next session? Um, we have sessions every Tuesdays and Thursdays. Uh, you can find the link on Twitter usually. Ruth asked for the practical part, is the encryption done behind the scene? Yeah, yeah. All, all that part is like done behind the scenes. So our part is like, we just type a message, hey, how are you doing? You send to a user, they receive, they reply. But that is just a simple process that happens behind the scene. That is just like, I've just brought to you a visualization of some small part of what happens behind the scenes. That is just a small part. Like it's so wide, the processes that are involved and so many, that was just like a demonstration. Yeah. 
Um, Ruth said, if it's behind the scenes, how can a hacker know the keys used? So uh, this is what happens. Like the hacker will get to intercept the traffic. Like the traffic as it's going from one user to the other. So the person will get to capture the traffic and the, like the packets of the data that is contained in the traffic. So after that, the person will either check the packet and get the, get the content that it contains. So from that is now when the user either decides to either decrypt the message or do whatever he or she wants to do. I think I've answered your question through. Yes, I don't see any more questions, but I see um, people saying thank you for the session. Uh, thank you guys so much for coming and giving your time on this Tuesday. Um, so you know our sessions run bi-weekly. Um, Tuesdays and Thursdays at seven to eight. Um, but thank you so much, Sam, John, yeah. um, for running this session. Um, um, the community seems to enjoy it, and I also enjoyed myself. Um, hopefully, you'll come back and expound, so it won't be an intro. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Thanks, everyone, for your time and your commitment, and for your audience. So we'll just keep doing more and more. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so Have much. Have a blessed night. <laughs> you too. Good night, everyone. John. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, there's one more question. Yeah. Uh, someone asked, and by that, the hacker can fake um, to be the server where the client sends the keys? Is yeah, yeah. True? Actually, uh, we, we, we'll spend some time and look at proxy servers. So what happens is that a user can set up his or a machine to be a server, and then we just what the person just needs are the certificates. So once the traffic reaches the machine, it will assume the server or the setup proxy is the machine. So from there, like the traffic will just continue normally, but in this case, it will be a proxy. So unless the person who is setting up the a server has the specific certificates. That is the only time that the server can like can manage to the hacker can manage to either hide or to assume the role of a server. So a proxy, what it does, like all the traffic that goes in and out has to pass through that machine. So the server, the hacker will just be either forwarding or dropping the traffic yeah that's the work of a proxy i think it's answered thank you um i shall finally re release you guys um i'm glad we finished on time okay good night guys <laughs>